So in this video, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating a process that's known as hydro dipping or hydrographics or water transfer printing. There's a whole bunch of names for it. Uh, but it's a really, really cool process in which you can put patterns or, or really intricate designs on, on pretty much any object. If you can paint the object, it has to be a hard object, you know, clothing wouldn't work, but uh, if you can paint the object and safely submerge it in water, uh, it can be hydro dipped. Um, I got this kit from a company called uh, MyDipKits.com. It's a great kit. It comes with everything you need to do the hydro dip process. Um, basically, it's a film. Uh, you prep and paint your parts, and we'll go through that in this video step by step. But it's a film with ink uh, trapped in between like two layers of film. And the ink is the design, the pattern. And you lay that into some water and spray it, spray it with an activator, and that basically turns that film to just ink. It dissolves the film. So whatever you dip through it, that ink wraps around your three-dimensional product. It's a really, really neat um, process. And again, this is the very first time I've ever done this. Um, I don't have any experience with hydro dipping at all. I did this in my garage just to give it a try. Um, and I am so impressed with the results. Uh, for being my very first try, it turned out fantastic. So give it a shot if you want. There are, again I bought this from MyDipKits.com, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of patterns available on that website, thousands of patterns available um, from other sites. But again, I, I chose the MyDipKit because it just seemed very complete. Uh, it had, there were several videos on YouTube of people that had great success with it, and I just thought, that's, that's the kit for me, I'll give that a try. So what I have here are just some miscellaneous little dowels uh, that I wrapped with electrical tape and I use these to put my parts on. You'll see later in the video where uh, this was for instance for the foregrip where I were uh, dipping the part and then rolling it. So here's one for the stock that I made uh, to dip the part and to roll it. Uh, this one was for the pistol grip. These aren't necessary but they made, I don't know, they just made my life easier uh, and you'll see that later in the video. Uh, it's, it's a great kit. It, it was a lot of fun. I'm really, again, really impressed with how it turned out. you got to go on the website and check it out. Uh, just, if for nothing more than just to see what it's all about. It's pretty neat stuff. And you'll see that later in the video. Uh, again, I'm very impressed with how it turned out. So, enjoy. And uh, we'll see you in the next part. Okay, so one of the first things we want to do is some dishes. We got the hottest possible water I can stand in here, and a brand new fresh sponge, and we got dishes, Josh style. And what we're doing is we're just going to scrub all of these parts to try to get rid of any residual oil that may be left on them, anything like that that could affect the quality of our paint or the paint adhering to the parts. So we'll get these all scrubbed up. Here we go. that one. Then we're going to set these aside and let them air dry and we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so we've got everything washed. Uh, I think I failed to mention in the last little section there that obviously you want to rinse them very well when you're done. Get all of the soap and any other contaminants that may be left on there uh, from the washing process. Get them rinsed off again in as hot a water as you can possibly stand. And uh, then just set them out and let them air dry. So we'll pick up with the next section. So this is what comes in the kit. Uh, again, this is available from MyDipKit.com. You can see it up here. Um, this one that I went with, let's see if we can find the part number. Here it is, DK801 Deadheads. And heads is spelled H-E-D-Z. So this is what comes in the kit. It comes in a tube and actually comes inside a bigger tube like this. Inside of that tube is this tube which has this inside of it. So we've got a uh, etch primer. I opted for the tan color, desert tan. Um, 
I think normally it comes with white, but you have a choice of what base colors you want to use, so I picked tan. Um, high gloss clear, uh, and it was a toss-up whether or not to go with high gloss or a matte. Um, for this particular application, it's not like I'm going to be sneaking up on deer with this thing, so uh, you know I don't care if it's glossy. And the activator for the film. I'll try to get up close. Here's the film. Hopefully it'll focus. Eh, it's not one to focus very good, but there are little skulls. There you can kind of see one. And I came with gloves and some very fine Scotch Brite. So the next step, after we've washed the parts thoroughly with soap and water, uh, rinse them well and allow them to dry. Now we're going to take Scotch Brite and we're going to rough up the surfaces of everything and then hang it up and apply our etch primer, a couple, two, three light coats. So now after the part's been washed, what I'm doing is I'm taking this, uh, this is Scotch Brite, very fine, and uh, I'm just scuffing up all the parts here. Just try to get the shine off of them, any place where I want the, the paint and the pattern to be. So I take it from shiny to dull and roughed up. And I'm going to do this on all of the parts. And you don't have to, you know, take all the paint off or anything. You just have to scuff it up so that your primer and paint will stick well to the part. So we'll pick up with the next section. Okay, so we took the 3M and we scotch brighted everything. All the parts, I got some hanging up here too. Uh, everything's scotch brighted, wiped down with a nice clean dry cloth. Uh, shake the crap out of the gray etching primer. And we're getting ready to apply it to all the parts. Light coats are better. Two or three light coats just to get the... Uh, good adhesion to the part, so it'll allow good adhesion of the base coat. So here we go. Just light coats, just misting. That's plenty good. I don't think I mentioned it, but they supply a mask with the kit. Do okay, it. so we've got all of our parts uh, coated in the gray the etch primer. You can see uh, down here the forward guards, uh, EOTech cover. Here's the glassable stock, pistol grip, and magazine. They're all coated in that gray. They've got three light coats and allowed to, uh, to dry in between each coat. So we're getting ready to apply the tan now right over the top of it. Uh, this is our base color. Obviously if you chose tan or whatever it is, you would be applying that color now. So we'll get to it. One thing to note, this size can and I might have applied it a little bit heavy, um, but this size can is just enough to do these five parts that you see sitting here. Um, six if you count the hand guard in half, but it was just enough to do it. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much the can will cover. So here we go. And this is the desert tan or camo tan or whatever you'd like to call it. And we'll pick up after I've got these all coated. Okay, so here we are. We've got our tan color applied. Don't want to get too close. That was about three coats again. Uh, just light coats until the entire part is coated well. Here is the EOTech cover. And I forgot in the previous video, before I sprayed this thing, I applied some uh, masking tape on the inside because I didn't want a light color on the inside. So I left that the factory black. There's the EOTech cover. And here's the stock. We got it from all angles, up and down, all around. Pistol grip. Same thing with it, all angles, bottom, and the magazine. Same thing, all angles. So, I will allow this to dry at least, I mean I can handle it now, but it's still very soft. I'm going to let it dry for at least, I would say, a couple hours. And then we'll move on to actually putting the, uh, the pattern over the top of this. So. We'll let this dry. I'll see you guys in a couple hours and we'll get that pattern on. Okay, so this is our pattern here. Uh, I've laid it out on the, on the foam board so you can just see it clearly. What they are is just little skulls. It's called, again, this is Dead Heads. 
and heads is spelled H-E-D-Z and it's available from mydipkit.com and what you can see it's really dark and crystal clear here kind of looks fuzzy here that's only because the roll has got a little hump in it if I push it down you can see it gets dark so it's not like it's faded anywhere um, over here you can see where it looks lighter it's just humped up if I push it down to the white you can see it, it's as dark as everywhere else on the pattern but that's it that's what we're going to coat our parts in dead heads so the next step here I've got some blue painters tape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my part down on this this pattern and I'm going to mask out a square in blue painters tape um, and then I'll cut that part out and that'll be what will float on top of the water um, basically you want to cut your, your square out big enough to fully encompass the part or at least the entire surface of the part that you're going to dip so a lot of a lot of people um, after they get their design taped out they will cut slits through the tape to allow for expansion uh, once you spray the activator on it the pattern tends to expand a little bit I'm not gonna do that with this pattern uh, the reason I'm not gonna do that is because you know there's some very fine lines on this stuff here and I'm afraid if the pattern were to expand, if you were to cut the slits into the tape to let it expand, it would distort the images. And I wanted to stay really crystal clear without distortion or warping. Uh, so I'm going to try a part without actually cutting the slits through the tape to allow expansion. Basically, I'm going to use the blue tape as a, a little dam to keep the pattern tight. So will it work? I don't know, but we'll give it a try. So uh, I'll get some of these uh, cut and laid out, and we'll get ready to start dipping parts. Okay. Well, we've got our water uh, to optimum temperature. We want to be between 70 and 80 degrees. So we're there. I have my film all cut out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this film. We're going to get it to fold in the center here. And we're going to lay it on the water in an attempt to not trap any air bubbles. So we're going to start by laying the middle in first, slowly. And try not to trap any air bubbles. So we'll set our timer. This has to sit on the water and hydrate for 60 seconds. So I'll try to get this on the water. So we'll see you in 60 seconds. Okay, we've had our product, our uh, dead head sitting in the water. I laid it in carefully to make sure we didn't get any air bubbles, and you can see it's really thin. What it is basically is ink that's trapped in between two layers of like saran wrap. The lower layer dissolves in water, the upper layer dissolves in the activator. So we're going to spray this. And then uh, we have about, you know, 10 to 20 seconds to get the part in there and get it dipped. I want this kind of in the middle. This is for the magazine. So, here we go. Let's take a seat here. Make sure I know exactly how I'm going to roll this magazine. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to apply the activator here. like so and everything gets liquid now basically it's just ink floating on water so I'm going to stick my hand in here I'm going to go in at a bit of an angle until I hit the halfway mark then I'm going to roll the magazine submerse it wiggle it around wiggle it around we're just wiggling here. Basically, I'm breaking up the ink that's on top of the water. So let's take a look at our part. Look at that. Is that not awesome? And because I rolled it, we only have one seam here on the front of the magazine. So there it is. So I'm going to take this in the house now. And I'm going to rinse this under hot water, warmer hot water. And I need to continue rinsing it for three to five minutes to get any residual uh, adhesive off of the product. 
basically. You'll rinse it until it continues to rinse all the shiny off until it looks dull. But not too shabby. Pretty cool, right? I like it. Okay, on to the next part. We have our pistol grip here. And I'm going to try the same roll just like I did last time. I'll come in here until I get halfway up and I'll roll the pistol grip so I end up with one seam on the back side. So here we go. Got our activator. We're going to spray it. Okay. Alright, here we go. into that pattern. Swish it around, swish it around. So that's what we got. For some reason messed up a little on the back side, but I can live with that. Switch it around, switch it around, so take it in the house. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the stock and see what happens. I'm going to keep back. Back, back, back. take a look at it. That turned out pretty darn good. All the way around it looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go rinse this one. Okay, here we go again. So we're going to do the foregrip. This is a large part. We're going to have to roll it. Good. Not too shabby. Alright. Looks good. We'll go in the house and get that room rinsed off. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the EOTech cover now. We have a pattern in the water. It's starting to expand. So, I'm going to stick my fingers in this thing, and we're going to go in, and swish it all around, and I dropped it, but that's okay, swish it all around, let's take a look at the EOTech cover now. Oh yeah, that turned out awesome. All the way across the top. Got one nice one on the side. That looks great. Okay, so we'll go rinse this one. So here is the magazine. There, everything's still drying, but it's all dipped now. 
you can see the pattern turned out pretty darn good a um, little stretched on on this side but I mean plenty livable um, I doubt anybody would notice probably just me because I know it's there so here's the pistol grip it's swinging on me sorry all this stuff's drying and then on this side of the pistol grip I, I redid it a little bit just so it didn't look so terrible it's got a little blank spot there you know that's it's funny the pistol grip I swore would have been just the simplest thing to do and it turned out the worst <laughs> and some of the stuff that I just I was certain was gonna be really really tough turned out great so uh, here's the EOTech cover by sheer accident that face turned up right on the side there just just turned out good and here's the other side not too shabby but I really like how that turned out so then we'll come over here and the stock oh my goodness I was so worried about the stock I had, I've watched hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, how to's on the stock you know and which is why I decided to roll some of these parts instead of dipping them. I didn't want to end up with, uh, you know, a void somewhere. Stretching the pattern was what I was worst worried about. Here's this side. I mean, it just turned out fabulous. I couldn't ask for better than that. Um, and then, of course, we have the foregrip here. It's drying, too. Let me see if I can spin it. And the reason I did this in a roll was because I did not want to have a... Uh, I wanted the patterns to match when it was on the rifle. Uh, so I wanted to roll it one continuous loop all the way around. So there's the side. That's the side view of the rifle. Um, and again, it turned out just great all the way around. Here's the other side view. I'll try to get out of the glare some. But it just turned out fantastic. And rolling it was the way to go. This way my... Uh, I don't lose my pattern uh, where the two halves meet. Everything just lines right up. So, you know, that's funny. I was I was really nervous about the stock and the foregrip, but uh, geez, it just turned out great. And something really simple that I well that I was sure was going to be simple, like the pistol grip, gave me all that grief. That's why I rolled it, so you don't break the pattern down the top of the stock. But very, very happy. So I'll let this stuff uh, dry out, and the last step will be to coat it with the clear, and let it dry and reassemble. So I just finished applying the last step in the My Dip Kit kit, which is high gloss clear. Uh, I'm really glad, actually, that I went th with the high gloss clear instead of the matte because, again, you know, this isn't a hunting rifle, so, you know, I don't have to worry about shine. We're obviously making it uh, foofy with the designs on there, with the graphics, so, I mean, if it shines a little more, who cares? There you can see the, the light shining on it. Boy, that high gloss clear is, is really nice. So, again, here's the uh, four guards. You can see the shine on it. Pretty decent stuff. We'll come over here. Here's the EOTech cover. Turned out really nice. And, oh, there was a good shine. Let's see if I can find that one. Oh, look at that. Boy, that clear is actually pretty darn nice. Super glossy. Anyhow, so there's the buttstock. And it just turned out great. So proud of that dang buttstock. And uh, pistol grip. Here's the messed up side of the pistol grip that I, I redid. It's not terrible. Um, it looks better than before. There's just this giant blotchy white spot here. It looked really bad. So I, I redipped it just to kind of hide that a little bit. But again, um, if we come around to the other side here, it turned out great. Ooh, look at the gloss on that. Anyhow, it turned out great. So I'm not worried if, I would say that this is out of the entire, uh, every part that I did in this kit, this is by far the worst part. All the rest of them turned out fantastic. But So uh, here's the magazine. Look at the gloss on that magazine. Now I'm really impressed with this kit. I mean the paint seems to be actually really decent quality. 
And again, uh, we rolled it, so there's one seam. You can see the seam right there, down the face of the mag. And uh, we'll try to follow it around. And the designs just come right around the other side. So, pretty darn happy with it. So, that's the last step. We'll get this stuff all, uh, man, that clear is just impressive. Look at that. Anyhow, we'll let this dry for probably, I, I'm going to let this sit out here for probably a couple, three days, just to make sure it's good and cured before I put anything back together. We'll do uh, one final little tidbit of the uh, assembled firearm. So, here we go. So this is the finished product. Uh, it turned out really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. Uh, again, this is the very first time I've ever used a, a Hydro Dip Kit. Uh, again, this was available from MyDipKits.com. And uh, for my very first try, it just turned out amazing. Uh, again, the one, the one part that, that I had a little trouble with was the back side of this pistol grip, the left side of it. But, uh, it's not so terrible that anyone is going to notice, you know, unless I point it out, but it just, it turned out fantastic. I could not be happier. Um, I was going to actually pay a local company to hydro dip it, and the company unfortunately went out of business before I had a chance to get down there. So I thought, you know, well, we'll give it a try and, and see. Uh, had I taken this to an actual company that, that hydro dips, I would have been more than happy if I got the firearm back with this quality of dip done on it, paying a professional to do it. So again, I'm very, very impressed with how it turned out. Um, I just couldn't, couldn't be happier. Of course, there's some out there that are going to give me some crap for doing the skulls on it. No, oh, that's foofy and well, whatever. I like it. I don't care if you don't. But uh, it's a great kit. Uh, I think price-wise, it's fair. Um, the quality is just outstanding, and uh, it, was, it was a fun, fun project. Um, I can see a lot of uh, hydro dip projects in my very near future. But thank you for watching. Please rate and comment. Subscribe to the channel.